Hi, my name is... And the objective of this video is to provide knowledge and guidelines in the prevention of exposure to body fluids containing chemo and other hazardous drugs. While it's well known there's a risk for exposure while mixing chemo and giving chemo treatment, there are other ways staff can be exposed. If I don't mix chemo or give chemo, how am I at risk? From patient body fluids. Patients' body fluids may be contaminated with small amounts of hazardous drug for at least 48 hours after they have completed all their doses. The urine, stool, and vomit of a patient receiving cytotoxic drugs have trace elements of these drugs and could be a source of exposure. How am I at risk for exposure? From surfaces. Surfaces in a patient's room or bathroom could have traces of hazardous drug on them from being touched either by the medication itself or by bodily fluids. In addition, surfaces involved when the nurses double check the medication, such as medication carts or countertops, could also be contaminated with small amounts of drug. Make sure you are not eating or drinking anything that is near surfaces that could be contaminated. This is one of the major reasons we are not allowed to eat or drink in a nurse's station. It places you at risk. Appropriate PPE to use when handling body fluids contaminated with hazardous drug. You're going to don your protective chemo gown, respirator mask, goggles, shoe covers, and two sets of gloves making sure that the first pair is under the elastic cuff of your chemo gown and the second pair is over the cuffs. If you have long hair, it should be contained with a hairnet so it can't dangle into the spill. You won't need PPE unless you plan to come into contact with body fluids. You don't need them for routine patient care activities. No need for overkill. If you are emptying a commode or other container used to collect body fluids and you're using a sprayer, make sure to be in full PPE. You will have splash, vapor, and aerosol of body fluids during this process. When disposing of contaminated urine, stool, or vomit down the toilet, pour the fluid directly over the bowl to decrease splashing. When flushing body fluids, cover the toilet with a paper toilet seat cover prior to flushing or use the chucks. Flush the paper toilet seat cover after the first flush. Discard the chucks into the yellow chemo bucket. To prevent spray or aerosol from toilet flushing, place a paper towel seat cover over the toilet prior to flushing. Leave the opening intact. Push the paper into the toilet after the initial flush. Do a second flush to flush the paper away. The example shown is not the way we'd want to empty a commode. You'll notice the nurse is not wearing a face shield and is at risk to be hit with splash and aerosol from these hazardous body fluids being flushed down the toilet. Instead, we should always protect ourselves when dealing with hazardous materials by wearing a face shield and respirator mask. How to safely dispose of PPE. Remove the outer gloves one at a time, turning them carefully inside out to avoid touching the outside which is considered contaminated. Next remove the face shield. Grab from the back of the face shield, careful not to touch the front which may be contaminated. Now remove the gown, careful to pull it away from the body not pulling it over the head to avoid transfer of contamination to clothes and skin. Turn the gown inside out. Fold it tightly and discard it into the yellow chemo waste bin. Next, remove and discard the respirator mask, avoiding touching the front of the respirator mask. Same with the hairnet. And lastly, the second pair of gloves, which will be discarded into the yellow chemo waste bin. And that's it. Wash your hands well with soap and water for 20 seconds and you're done. This concludes our training on how to protect from chemo and body fluids. For any questions, reach out to the oncology nurse on duty.